Around Lake Chaser, a huge crowd has gathered because of the ongoing situation. A flower seed washed in from the ocean, so there's currently a flower monster living in the middle of the lake. And while that normally wouldn't be a problem, it is spreading salt water and killing all the fish nearby, as well as harming the workers that try to get into the water. So something needs to be done about it. Master Splinter thought it would be a good idea to ask a nomad for help since they are really good at dealing with situations like these. But unfortunately, the nomad was busy, so he just sent the girl that lives with him instead. And there are a lot of rumors about this girl since she supposedly got kicked out of the city for causing trouble a while back. Not to mention the worst part, she's got no cat ears. In this world, everyone has some kind of animal feature on them, be it paws, whiskers, or ears. So the fact that Belle has nothing but smooth human skin is as out of place as someone wearing a full-body fursuit to a funeral. The people can't keep their eyes off Belle because they think she's a weirdo and she finds it really annoying, especially since she is here to help these fools. She introduces herself as Belle Lablack and she says she is here on the orders of her master, Cien Lablack, to help them get rid of the flower monster. The elder mouse thanks Belle for coming all the way out here, and once she asks where the monster is, she is directed to the tentacles moving in the middle of the lake. They've already tried fighting it already, but its body is so tough that it deflects their attacks and those tentacles. We don't talk about what the tentacles do. Belle assumes the monster must be a Negroni, but the only way for her to be sure is to see for herself. The elder asks if that means she is willing to slay the monster, and Belle confirms it, especially since she loves shoving flower tentacles in her mouth. Belle gets down to business and drops her heavy sword on the dock, after which she starts taking off her clothes so she'll be light enough to handle the tentacle flower. Once she's done, she runs out onto the water and is almost immediately grabbed by a tentacle. But as it is dragging her down to the bottom of the lake, she manages to break herself free. Now that she's gotten a good look at it, she is sure it's a Negroni, although it's a lot bigger than the one she's used to. Belle takes her sword out and readies herself for an attack, so as the monster tries to strike her with its tentacle, she is able to parry its attack, but she still ends up getting pushed back and slammed into the buildings, so this is when she decides to get serious and unleash her full power. The monster tries attacking her again, but this time, she is easily able to slice through its tentacles and counter all its attacks, so while there may be a lot of collateral damage, Belle is slowly able to close the distance and deal a devastating blow to the flower monster. However, Belle suddenly begins to smell salt water. Unfortunately, when she slashes the monster, she forced it to spray out all the salt water it had in its body, and a drop of salt water is enough to absolutely ruin food, so people frantically try to save their food. While Belle is distracted by the chaos, the monster grabs her with one of its tentacles, but it doesn't have the strength to fight anymore, so Belle asks it why it is here in the first place and why it didn't just stay in the sea. Belle's body begins to glow as the monster communicates that it wanted to go home, but it couldn't for some reason and now the only thing it can do is die here and spread its seeds everywhere. However, Belle still has an obligation to get rid of the monster, so she can't let it create more flower monsters. Belle breaks free from the monster's tentacles and while she feels bad for it, she still uses her sword to finish it off once and for all. Once she's done, she returns to the dock where the elder thanks her for saving their village even if most of it was destroyed in the process. He says they'll send the reward to her house later, but before she goes, Belle asks if she can take one of the flower monster seeds and tentacles with her. The elder doesn't have a problem with it, but he has no idea why she would want something like that, so Belle reminds him that she loves eating flower meat, and the people are okay with it, but they're still silently judging Belle for eating something that's so gross. On her way home, Belle takes the seed and tosses it into the water, since it was the last wish of the flower monster, and as she returns to the house, she finds her master hunched over by the fireplace, trying to get it started. She tells him that she is done with her job, and San congratulates her on a job well done, but he is still far too focused on the fire to look at her. There's a lot Belle doesn't understand about Xi'an, like why he's putting so much effort into starting a fire when he could just use magic to do it, or why he sent her to do the job when he could have gotten it done without destroying half the village like she did. Xi'an finally finishes setting the fireplace, so he goes over to Belle, and asks what she brought back with her. So Belle excitedly shows him her flower tentacle. San is impressed and tells her that she cut it really well, although he also says her technique could use a little improvement regardless. That aside, he asks her what she wants to do with the tentacle and Belle answers that she is going eat it like she does with all the other flower fish she kills. A while later, Belle is done preparing the flowers and as she and Sian sit down to eat, Shane reminds Belle not to waste the leather from the tentacle. So she says she'll think about making some shoes from it later since it is pretty useful. 
After that, they begin eating. But Bell complains about Cheyenne using way too many spices in his food, since that's not how he's supposed to eat it. But Cheyenne doesn't really care. As dinner goes on, Bell asks Shin if he knows why flower monsters leave the sea. Shane can't say for sure, but he thinks they might have because unhappy with their situation and are looking for a new home. But Belle doesn't think that's the case since the flower she killed today said it wanted to go back to the sea but couldn't. Sian says it was probably just the flower's procreation instincts driving it to spread as many seeds as possible. And it's not something that's exclusive to flowers as all creatures have an image drive to intermingle with the world around them. Except chronic gamers, of course. After that, Cyan gets up from the dimmer table and goes to sit in his chair while Belle handles the dishes, but she still has some questions for Cyan. First off, she asks why he made her go deal with Flower since everyone there was scared of her because of how she looked, but Cyan justifies his decision by reminding Belle that he doesn't fight. He is an Enola, which means his job is to act as an instructor and nothing more, but Belle still thinks he is wasting his talents by being a pacifist. She is worried that they won't be able to stay here for much longer at this rate, otherwise the army of insatiable emptiness is bound to catch up to her sooner or later. She wants to go somewhere where she can find other regular humans like herself. But as far as she and knows, there are no places with humans nearby. Belle is sick of living in isolation because people fear her appearance and Sen tells her she's probably feeling homesick or more accurately, longing for a place where she can belong. Belle asks Sen if there's any way for her to cure her homesickness and he suggests that she could go on a journey to find a place that she can call home. Currently, there is no one else like her in Schwartz land, so she'll never be accepted here. But if she goes on a journey and travels the world, then she might be able to find what she's looking for. He tells her to go to Park City and undergo the trials to become an official nomad. And he's sure she can do it because he is the one who taught her everything she knows, although Belle doesn't seem too sure of herself. He warns her that traveling the world means putting her safety on the line constantly, and there will be no one there to save her if she gets herself into trouble. He may be her teacher, but there's no way he will be able to stay by her side forever. She doesn't know if she is ready for such a journey, but as her confidence is wavering, her sword begins to glow and she's reminded of everything she's gone through up till now. Apparently, she literally just popped out of a stone one day and the people around her were pretty freaked out by her because of it. Naturally, kids begin to pick on her for being different, but she possessed supernatural strength, so the bullying didn't last long. She eventually got adopted by a nice couple, but she soon realized that she was different from them, so she could never really accept them as her parents. She ran away one night, and eventually she ended up at a tower with a weird lack of security. She climbs the tower and soon arrives in a room with nothing but a sword that has been chained up. Since there's no one here to stop Belle, she approaches the sword and touches it, at which point it starts glowing pink and accepts her as his partner. Belle then takes off running, and there are suddenly guards trying to stop her as she flees, but she is too quick for them to catch her. As she makes it outside, Belle stops once she sees the light of the moon, but this allows the guards to catch up to her, and this guy is ready to cut her down right here and now. However, by the power of her sword, she is able to slice the guard's sword in half despite never having trained before. She continues running, but after all she has done to escape, another guard shows up in front of her and knocks her to the ground. He points his sword at her and asks why she did all this, and the only reason she has is because she thinks of the sword as her friend. The guard accepts her reason and decides not to kill her, but she still got locked in prison for trying to steal the sword. Back to the present, as morning comes, Sam receives the reward from the elder mouse, but as soon as they see Belle, they all run away in fear. Belle has come to terms with the fact that no one here will ever accept her, so she asks to have a serious conversation with Sian. She says she is ready to undertake the trials so she can become a nomad, and Shan can tell she is determined to go through with it. But he's surprised she was able to come to a decision overnight. Still, he's proud that she's ready to face the world and tells her to go and get her sword so he can give her one last lesson. They head outside, and Shan informs Belle that she can't become a nomad unless she takes on a curse. A curse can take on several different forms depending on the life of the curse bearer, so it's going to be her first trial on her path to becoming a nomad. It will haunt her for the rest of her life, no matter what she does, and in his case, Shan's curse prevents him from using his powers to do anything other than teach, which explains why he sends Belle out on missions instead. Curses are passed down through the blood of nomads, so he asked Belle if she is ready to inherit his curse. Belle agrees, and they both cut their hands to begin the ceremony. Shan tells Belle to state the reason for her journey. Belle says she wants to find out where she comes from, and to find a place where people will finally accept her. With that, a curse has been inherited by Belle, but it's much worse than she had expected. 
She was starting to forget the face of Shan, and to her horror, she was losing all her memories of Shan as well. Shannon says she doesn't need to remember him, she just needs to remember what he has taught her. And this works out well for him this way, she will never be able to hate him for his ulterior motives. He is entrusting her to visit the places that he could never make it to during his life. Belle curses him for messing with her mind and erasing her cherished memories and San apologizes, but he says her killing him will free her from the pain of forgetting. Belle doesn't want to kill him, but Shan has made it so she has no choice if she wants to move forward with her journey. Belle tells Shan she loves him, but he tells her he is nothing more than a forgotten memory to her. So he's sure she will find a better person to love someday, but for now, he will give her his final lesson as her teacher, so he will face her head-on with everything he has. And as they charge at each other and clash, Belle overpowers and kills Shin. This was the end of episode 1. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.